Okay, thank you so much, Denise. Yes, I am Joe Messinella, an account manager um, for for your system. Uh, several of your campuses are, are using us: uh, Georgia Perimeter College, uh, University of West Georgia, uh, and ECOR. And uh, the ECOR um, has just uh, uh, gone live with us this semester, and it's turning out to be a tremendous success. Uh, uh, we will go a little bit into uh, what we figure is in more detail, but generally it's a, it's a listen feature, and uh, every time a student um, logs into their courses, they will see a listen icon as we will review, and um, they will have the content read back to them and highlighted. And in a 100% uh, online program like eCore, you will see that the, um, the usage is incredibly high. And this is the same for grad students, uh, community college students, students in K-12 credit recovery. Um, a lot of people think that text-to-speech is going to be used by struggling students, but our statistics show us that it's actually used by um, a, a large percentage of students who, for whatever reason, um, uh, prefer to listen as well as, as read. Uh, there's many different uh, categories of students that, that use ReadSpeaker, but we, we cannot always divide that down for you, which ones are doing it. But we can see the stats, and, and they're fantastic. Okay, so uh, ReadSpeaker is a text-to-speech service that's uh, integrated by D2L into their platform. And the campuses that want to have access to it uh, simply have it activated uh, for a subscription fee. And how do I turn... Up at the you top, my, the uh, you, can, you can all see my um, uh, screen, correct? Full screen. Yeah. Okay. Just a little bit about Read Speaker. We've been in business since uh, uh, 1999. We are all over the world. So we just had our annual convention. Folks from uh, Australia, Japan uh, joined the European team in, in Portugal to um, review what our goals are and to, uh, of course, to congratulate ourselves with, with the great success we are having. We support over. 40 languages now and 95 voices. So uh, most of our clients are in in Europe uh, still, but our fastest growing market is uh, the U.S., uh, where we uh, mostly concentrating on online education. Just to give you an a indication of our, our reach, uh, Australia and Japan are also uh, growing rapidly, but um, really here in the U.S. is uh, where things are really taking off. And we'll talk about why that is a few slides down. Uh, some of the uh, institutions are using us. I mentioned West Georgia and Georgia Perona College, but all the way to Washington State University, all the way up into um, Minnesota, Canada, uh, Pennsylvania. And uh, this is just a few examples of who we are, are working with. I mentioned uh, uh, grad students and usage. Um, Texas teachers down in Texas that um, provide a certification program for uh, those with a four-year degree who want to teach in Texas uh, have really been uh, part of our learning process. We see that in, t in Texas teachers, the read speaker is used just as readily as um, if we go down uh, by organizations uh, like, um, well, K-12 organizations. And I was thinking about advanced academics. I don't see them here listed, but they, they are a great example of uh, those two of uh, where you would think the usage would be higher by students of advanced uh, academics, but it's absolutely not the choice, not the uh, not the case. And so we um, partner with uh, large publishers, the McGraw Hill, EBSCO, Cengage Learning. Perhaps some of your students have access to MindTaps. We are also embedded there, and we partner with all the major LMS uh, providers, uh, Canvas, Blackboard, Moodle, and of course D2L. I'm trying to maybe go too fast, um, but. Just tell me to slow down if you feel that's the case, but we have a lot to cover. Um, just a few of our, um, our non-education uh, clients, and you can see it's quite impressive with the Library of Congress and Johnson & Johnson and, and WebMD. And these are, all, of course, uh, all very important clients to us, but I will do want to stress again that in education uh, is where we are um, realizing the greatest amount of success. And, and we judge that success not only on how many clients we, we have or how much money we earn, but how much usage there is. And, and it is an education where if you compare the District of Columbia, uh, the city of Atlanta, who happens to be a client of mine, the usage there is quite respectable, and also with Johnson & Johnson, um, but it just does not compare to um, online learning. And I guess that makes sense as well. Uh, how does it work? Uh, the student will see a little listen icon, which we'll uh, take a look at. 
They click on it, our servers detect that, and uh, rip the uh, material from the client server and begin reading to the uh, end user in, in a split second. It's just um, D2L uh, um, testing environment. Uh, we are in D2L right now, and this is what ReadSpeaker will do. It, uh, once it's integrated and activated, the little listen icon appears, and the students have uh, two options. They can highlight text, click the little listen icon, and I'm going to try to raise the volume and put my microphone uh, to my headset so you can hear it as it reads. Joe, we're not seeing the link. You're not seeing the link? All I'm seeing is that slide with the West Georgia D2L. Okay. You want to share your you want to share your desktop. Okay. So let me see then. Where it says share up at the top. Mm-hmm. And then click on that and you should see it. Okay, share my desktop. Okay, and now you have it, okay. right? Yeah. Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for that, Bob. We did go over that. So here we yeah. are. Uh, you can see the course then now? Yes. Okay, so the student would highlight the text. A little hovering icon will appear, and then when clicking on that, uh, we'll start to read. Now you. You won't be able to hear it. Uh, I can't hear it either. I'm not quite sure why. Um, but I will send some links, and, and you'll be able to try it in, in a follow-up email. I thought we did hear it uh, during our testing, Mark. We, the other day. we did. Uh, um, perhaps if you check that microphone and see if the audio is turned up on it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Where right. were we? So you highlight the text, right? Yeah. yeah. And then you see it looks like there might be a little X next to that microphone. I'm not sure. Click on it. Uh, which microphone is that? Up here. There's a little microphone on the button now, <clears throat> right where you just had your cursor. Or what about the listen right up below accessibility? Mm. No, this is something that has to do with my desktop reaching uh, the sound of my desktop reaching your you guys. It's not. It's not the. Um, it's a reason the other day I'm you, not you held your phone to it, right? Yeah, but I'm not hearing it either because it's it's, it's okay. using a, a different way of. Uh, uh, I don't know how we can correct that. Is your desktop muted right now? No, it's not muted. Uh, let me just check it. It's it's up all the way. Uh, let me just see. And it, and uh, it's kind of strange, isn't it? Do you see any options to to share audio from my desk? No, but you're on your phone, right? Yeah, I'm called in. Yes. So are you are you hearing it when you play the the? N um, no, because my, my headset is, is going through my telephone and not through my desktop. The other day, no, I, called I, was, a, the other day I called on a separate might, phone. And then well, that's might wanna, the only thing I could think of would be to unplug the headset from your phone and try that. But that's the only thing I could think of. Um, what I, I could do, do that. No, I, what we'll do is we'll go through the... Uh, We'll go through the um, slideshow. We'll go through the slideshow, and then we'll we'll see if we can pick up on the. Uh, okay, so go back up to the top to share. Okay. And turn that off. You want to go to share? There you go. All right. So what we'll do is see if um, we can uh, go through this and then uh, take some questions and answers and and uh, see if I can call in on a separate phone, and then I could dedicate this one to the computer, and we could do the demos. So basically, okay. uh, yeah, that would be a great way of doing it. I think you saw it working. Um, I hope you did. It, it, what it does is just instantly begins to highlight and read back uh, the content. And that is the, that is the thing. Uh, I called on my mobile phone, uh, Mark, uh, the other day, but uh, we were connected to the computer 
with uh, video and audio. Um, mm -hmm. So the integration is quite simple uh, because the uh, USG administrators have done the, uh, the pre-work, so to speak. It, it is already ready to go in your instance. Uh, so the folks who are testing, and there are several testing right now, uh, just go through, um, through your support office to have it activated, and it's literally up and running within um, uh, a few hours. And we provide uh, some ID information. That's really all we need to do. <clears throat> D2L um, has made, made it a pretty simple process. Um, the integration is uh, going to read online content and, and documents within D2L. Um, we are working for a, a fuller uh, integration, a complete integration with D2L, but I think what we offer right now and what D2L has provided is, is quite impressive as it is. Um, thousands of students are, are making use of ReadSpeaker, just in eCore alone. Um, it also allows MP3 to be downloaded so that the student can take um, the content along with him and, and listen to them. Um, there are different voices and languages that can be used, but really in D2L it's mostly um, English. Uh, to, to be clear, uh, it's not meant to be a replacement for screen readers uh, or screen reader technology. Our CTO, um, Frederick Larson, happens to be blind, the person who co-created ReadSpeaker. Uh, and he wanted to make the web more accessible for those with reading language barriers. But he re uses a, a screen reader, a special keyboard to uh, do his programming. Um, those who are now using screen readers will be able to use ReadSpeaker. They will detect the listen icon. They will have it read back to them. But um, we cannot substitute screen readers. It's really meant for a much broader audience uh, of those who can benefit from text-to-speech. Um, to be clear, uh, what it also is not is it's not something that will read um, outside the discussion, inside the discussions and, and quizzes and, and uh, things of that nature. But I said, as I said, we're working on that. Um, the learning repository. Uh, if you click on a link inside a D2L and it goes to say um, a CNN or, uh, or, or uh, New York Times, something of that nature, we cannot read that because even though they're viewing it and it looks like it's inside D2L, it's actually on, on another network. News and discussions uh, are also not included. Um, I think it's important uh, to uh, understand uh, why I read speaker. I mean, it's great technology, it, uh, it works excellently, uh, but really it's about helping learners um, better comprehend and remember what, what they are learning. And there is a convenient aspect to it, but um, you can imagine some students are lazy, maybe they just, just want to listen, but it really is uh, proven to increase uh, retention, comprehension, and memory. Um, and uh, if you are familiar, as I sure you are, with uh, Universal Design of Learning and the uh, Quality Matters rubric. It really dovetails well uh, with those two programs. So we see a direct correlation between uh, those who are interested in Quality Matters and ReadSpeaker. And I know that uh, WestJA and ECOR and George Perona College are. So it's just three examples of how um, when I approach someone that is already involved with Quality Matters, they seem to pretty pretty much um, get ReadSpeaker uh, right away and want to have access to it. They just seem to go together. And I believe it's one of the um, eight general standards, um, accessibility and usability in, in the, the rubric. It's not, of course, <clears throat> going to solve all the problems or help all students, but it is an integral part of making online learning more accessible. And um, I just covered that. Are there any questions at all? I, I can't really see. Well, we'll, we'll let you know. But I, I don't, I don't quite um, grasp mm -hmm. the difference between this and a screen reader. Why, why uh, is it different? Well, a screen reader is uh, something that's going to be given to uh, special students who are dealing with um, uh, blindness or severe. Um, Disabilities, right? Uh, ReadSpeaker yeah. is going to be available for all students on all devices. So it's not something that is really designed for uh, those uh, with screen readers. It's designed for um, all students. So if you are slightly dyslexic, if you are a second language person, if you um, learn better by listening than by simply reading, 
um, if, if you want to really pound information to your head and read it aloud and uh, watch the highlighting and, 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 and listen to it read to you at the same time. I mean, this is not something new. Uh, students for centuries have been uh, uh, chanting information over and over again, um, reading it out loud to help them better remember the content. And so that's just what ReSpeaker is a part of. It's, it's about accessibility, but it's also a, a learning tool. So, uh, okay. for example, if I look up a, a, a telephone number on the web and I want to dial it with my uh, mobile phone, then I have to close that website and dial it in. If I say it to myself, um, well, not out loud, but, you know, speak it internally, I have a better chance of remembering that number than I would if I just looked at it. So that's just a small example of, of how we'll go into that on the next slide. Speaker is a part okay. of. Thank you. You're welcome. The universal design of learning. Uh, different uh, learning styles uh, the students have. Um, some are going to learn better with an audio uh, version of the content. And also, it, it helps to stimulate different parts of the brain. And when that's the case, you have a better chance of retaining the information. So it really is um, something that's not necessarily new. We're just bringing that to the Internet. And, and as I said, we've been learning for centuries, so different ways to remember and retain information. And um, I think Reese Speaker's done a great job of bringing that to the web. Okay. And it, uh, just to further emphasize it, it's really about bimodal presentation. You can see here uh, what, we, what we saw on the uh, West George um, uh, D2L environment and ha by highlighting it word at a time, and, and the sentence, it really pops out, and it really helps you to concentrate and to uh, keep your concentration. And whether you are a, a student with a, a, a high-grade average and you want it higher or you are struggling, um, this, this is not saying, well, some students should use it and some shouldn't. We leave it to the student to decide how they want to use it by just providing this, this option. And according to research, there's uh, well, emphasizing again, text to speech in general, not just read speaker, will improve uh, recognition skills, vocabulary. And there are a lot of kids coming out of high school that are going to struggle in the first couple of years because their um, their language level is not what it what it should be either because it's it's a second language. Uh, the poor readers, and and there are a lot of students who are going to be very good at what they study. Um, and, and struggle with other courses they're not really interested in. They really just want to get that grade. So, I mean, that's also an important consideration. Um, you know, without that diploma, it's going to be very hard for the for those students to reach their goal, and, and we speaker can help them uh, just get that grade that they need. Um, improved student outcomes. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of the um, one of the uh, tests that have been done uh, using text to speech in education. Uh, we have a white paper that collects a lot of these different um, uh, tests that have been going on uh, for the last uh, several years and put it into a white paper and I can follow up by sending that along. I don't want to spend too much time with it, but it is scientifically proven to help uh, learners. Um, and this is just a little bit more information about that. I'm not going to read it all out. I, I think you get the idea. Um, we do see that text-to-speech is in education to stay. Uh, we have clients all over the world uh, in, in different verticals, and uh, but we see that our education clients stay with us uh, uh, longer. Uh, we hardly ever lose any uh, client that's education-based, and we're adding clients every month. So it, it's really something that um, we feel is going to become um, uh, regular. Uh, we get great feedback from parents, students, uh, uh, professors, administrators, and uh, it just seems to be something that's going to become a, a part of online learning uh, in the next five years. Again, going back to the screen reader, um, it is, they are an important um, um, uh, factor, and you want to make sure things are as accessible as possible. But ReadSpeaker is really to accommodate all of these folks in the, in the bottom half of the triangle. In general, for a website, the 20%, we would like to say around 20% of the adult population benefit from um, text-to-speech in a website. Um, that percentage is much higher when it comes to online learning where uh, 
it's hard to determine which student is uh, the biggest fan of ReadSpeaker, but I'll demonstrate with the stats later that it's, it's, it's a wide variety of students. Um, and again, poor readers, those who are dyslexic, if you are uh, visually impaired but not really blind, and if you ever saw uh, a student or a colleague having to enlarge text um, so they can read it, they don't have screen readers, uh, they can use different devices, um, but it is a struggle for them, and, and this, this can help them. And, and we haven't touched on the non-traditional student. We know now that students are uh, continually coming back to school. They're working. They have children. It's a real challenge for them. And ReadSpeaker is um, a little boost uh, for this large group uh, of your students by allowing them to download MP3 by reinforcing the learning experience. Um, they don't have, you know, all day to uh, take in the information. Times are very important to them. So we think it's a big factor in uh, having uh, um, these, this large group and a growing group um, accommodated with text-to-speech. You're an international student, I guess that's pretty important. If you, I am a second language person, I, I live in the Netherlands, I can tell you that uh, speaking and listening comes first, but writing and, and reading are slightly more difficult. Okay. And this is just an example of the, uh, of the bar that we're going to take a look at in a moment. Um, there are settings where the, the uh, highlighting can be changed, the speed of the reading can be changed by the end user, uh, downloading of MP3. And it's a very slick design. It doesn't take up the, uh, very much room, and uh, there's even a volume control. The idea of ReadSpeaker is to keep the process, uh, keep it as simple as possible. If you do come across someone who is uh, cognitively challenged, um, we don't want to confuse anyone. There's no downloading. It's just click and go. Uh, keeping it as simple as possible. And we use the latest web standards. It's HTML5 uh, based, uh, so a student will have the same experience on a smartphone, a pad, or their desktop. So it it really is made uh, to be agnostic to the end device or browser. Um, there are no barriers. Again, if someone happens to use a screen reader, they'll be able to fully control uh, the reader and player with their, if they choose to use uh, ReadSpeaker instead of their, uh, their own uh, software, they will not interfere with that um, in any way. So I think I am not going to go into text data at this time. It's something that we're going to introduce uh, to your some of your campuses, and we're going to offer a, a free trial, but this is a, um, personal learning tool where a student will have a read-write experience uh, in a cloud-based package. So anytime they open up a device, they log into their account, they are going to have a read-write experience uh, right from D to L without having to log into another um, program. If you're familiar with Kurzweil or Read-Write Gold, this is a new alternative. And it seems to be um, getting very uh, positive feedback from this. Um, a part of the integration with uh, uh, D2L is Doc Reader. So we have the HTML, but also documents, H, um, Word, PDFs, PowerPoints that teachers, uh, professors upload into the LMS, and these can now also be read um, by ReadSpeaker. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. I mentioned the statistics. Um, every time a student clicks on ReadSpeaker, a stat is collected. Uh, it breaks it down to the uh, date and the URL. Um, and we can see on the next slide that, and, uh, let's see which one is this. Let's get a little closer. So uh, Connections Academy or Advanced Academics, uh, actually, um, you can see quite a high amount of usage, around 50,000 uh, clicks a month for around 30,000 students. And then if we go down to um, Texas Teachers, we can see around 8,000 students uh, uh, activating the um, listen icon even more. So it, it is, for us, also a learning process. I, I learned about uh, quality matters from, from my clients, and, and I'm learning about how ReadSpeaker is being uh, used by different students all the time. And it, it's something that was surprising, but now we're quite uh, used to seeing this. Um, pricing is based on FTEs, and this is something that um, it, it, 
it's for everyone all across the board the same. Uh, my um, intention is to eventually have this uh, provided to the campuses um, by the university system. Uh, this will make it the most cost-effective way because the, the higher the uh, FTE, the lower per FTE. And it really is helpful when the campuses sign up. Uh, we are offering uh, incentives to keep the pricing as reasonable as possible so that I uh, and the campuses will show that they are supporting this and they and they want it. Uh, if it's easy to say to the um, the powers that be that the, every campus should have this, but when you see three, five, six, eight campuses signing up and paying um, for their own FTEs, uh, that would be a lot smarter to just uh, say, well, this is something we can really do for a good price and everyone can have it. And I don't know uh, if that's going to happen, but I explained that to the campuses signing up, that's, I will work for them um, with their support to, to get that done within a year or so. Um, again, just an overview, barrier-free, um, the user can customize uh, uh, the highlighting the speed, but we do try to keep it as simple as possible. And the use um, can be used with all uh, browsers, devices, completely secure. And uh, we have a great support team, but it's more in place, not for the end user, uh, more for the, for the client base with D2L, though the process is so simple that uh, it's rarely used. Okay. Um, technology infrastructure. Um, we have a double redundant uh, setup so that if the, uh, for some reason, uh, on this side of the ocean, the uh, there is a, a problem with our servers, we have a fallback uh, system in the U.S. and vice versa. Uh, I've been here for around six years. There have never been any uh, fallouts. Uh, we figure it's up and running 99% of the time. So it's very secure and reliable. And that's who I am. <laughs> OK. Well, thank you, Joe. Um, we have just a couple minutes left. But um, looking at mm -hmm. the questions, and um, Autumn was just wanting to confirm that it only reads the HTML in D2L, but not the documents downloaded outside of D2L, like a Word document. Is that correct? It reads the documents within D2L. So um, let me just show you very quickly. I have here, um, sorry. That's, by the way, can you see that? Or, no. We're seeing your home, that home screen again, that first slide. OK, let me, let me share it. OK, this is the um, ECO has been with us since the beginning of the uh, semester, I think you can see now. And we can see the incredible usage by the students, uh, almost 12,000 in a month, over 10,000. And it's, this is a, a indicative of an, a, an entirely online program, um, but I think it's just as important to have it uh, at the campus level as well, where the usage will not be this high. It makes sense because the students are uh, not always logged into the course, but it is uh, helpful uh, when they are. So. Here are some documents uploaded into our D2L um, uh, account uh, platform. And when the student will see a, a document that the professor loads up, they will see it in its normal format. Uh, but they will have the um, alternative to open up with DocReader onto our platform. So it, this will be uh, another version of the same no, it's not. Don't know. So anyway, this this should open up into. Let me go back. Oh, it's, it might be my internet uh, connecting, but it will open up this document into an HTML5 uh, format. It will have a a listen feature. Let me go back and try another document. See if it opens quicker for us. Loading, 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 and so we can see. Uh, a PDF, and then when you click open with Doc Reader, it will open it up in, on our server. So generally, it means a, a faster um, load time. They can download the document, of course, uh, as a normal PDF. Um, but I have to apologize. I don't know why this is not coming through. But no, we do read um, HTML, but also uh, PowerPoint, 
Word, uh, all, all most uh, EPUB, most documents that are being used uh, nowadays. Okay. Um, if I know that we are at time, so those of you who are here and need to go, we certainly understand that. Um, if anyone sure. wants to ask Joe a question, you could raise your hand and I can unmute you, or you could put it in the chat feature um, if you have just a couple minutes to stay with us, Joe. Sure, I sure I do. Okay. I'd love to uh, address any questions. Um, Kathy... Dolan is asking, do we all have the doc reader feature at every USG campus? Um, I believe the uh, University of West Georgia has it active. Uh, ECOR does not require it at this time. Um, uh, we had discussed it with them. And Georgia Perimeter College, um, I have to check on that. I, I, I don't know uh, if that was part of their package or not. It, they have it available to them. It just has to be activated. And of course, there is there is a fee. But um, yeah, anyone can have it activated. I, there are a couple of campuses uh, uh, testing it right now, uh, and they are also testing the Doc Reader uh, feature as well. So. Okay, and I see Autumn asked a follow up. So, is the Doc Reader that we're viewing part of ReadSpeaker? Our D12 does not have a Doc Reader; it simply downloads the file. And then someone else is, and she's also asking what the fee is for the Doc Reader. Doc Reader is, um, I'll, I'll answer that first, 20% of the annual fees. But at this time, to offer an incentive, uh, we are offering it for the first year for no cost with the anticipation that by saving uh, the campuses um, a bit of money at this time and having them sign up for an attractive price that uh, we can encourage the, the system to provide it. Um, and so, I mean, that's 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 the way we've, we've been planning it. So it is 20% of the annual fee, but for the first year, I've been offering it for no cost. Okay. And what was the other question about Doc Reader? Um, let's see. Doc, I think I yeah, think Doc, you may have already answered that one. If yeah, it was Doc a Re feature at every USG campus. Doc Reader will open. Uh, I see another question. Uh, make sure I cover it. Doc Reader. Um, when you come across a PDF in D2L, the student can download it. They can open it up as a PDF as it is, or they can choose to open it up with Doc Reader, which will actually take that document, open it up on our servers, and it will give them a reading experience where they can highlight the text and listen to it, or click the Listen icon and listen page by page. And that's just part of the basic integration now. Okay, great. Are there other questions, or if anyone wants to ask with their microphone, you're free to do that. Um, just let me know either by raising your hand or just putting a little comment in the chat feature, and I will unmute your microphone. <laughs> 